and welcome. Thank you for watching or listening to this candidate forum. This is one of several hour-long conversations between candidates running for a seat on the KPFA local board. My name is Vita Flores. I'm from the League of Women Voters. I'll be your moderator and host. I'm here with Ann Laser, who will be our timekeeper from the League of Women Voters of Marin County. KPFA is a listener-sponsored radio station, one of five stations of the Pacifica Network, the country's first and only independent national radio network. The views expressed during this program are those of the candidate, not of KPFA. All viable candidates have been invited to participate in these discussions. Our format today is that after each candidate introduces themselves, we will address one question to each candidate and then let each of the remaining candidates comment or follow up. The candidates can also ask a question of that person. Then each candidate, after our question series, each candidate will have one minute closing statements. We'll go ahead and start our introductions to my right with Marilla Aguayas. Yes, my name is Marilla Aguayas and I've been a journalist and writer and activist since uh, I was 17, so it's been about 60 years. Um, I'm running for the board because I believe that it's a duty and honor. Thank you. Next. Uh, my name is Mark Van Lantuit. I'm a longtime listener, first time candidate. I love KPFA. What KPFA provides is needed now more than ever. What you get on KPFA, you will not hear on CNN. You will not hear on MSNBC. You will not hear on NPR. It is vitally important that we make sure that KPFA survives these turbulent times. Thank you. Lily Kimura. Hi, I'm Lily Kimura, and I'm running for the United uh, on the slate for the United for Independent Radio Camp Forum. I'm a family law attorney, and I've been a family law attorney for the past 43 years. And uh, prior to that, I taught at the University of California, Berkeley, in the Ethnic Studies Department. Thank you, Mr. Fred Cook. I've been an activist for a long, long time, probably 50 years, and. I followed that passion into doing investigative journalism and TV journalism. I did 20 years of news and documentary and uh, had shows on a variety of stations. But I am interested in being on the board now because I feel hopeful about creating a new culture. Thank you. Ms. Mantra Plonsi. Hi. I am running on the Rescue Pacifica slate for a seat on the listener station board because I believe that it's the listeners that um, really should be having more of a say in what's going on at the programming side of things. Um, I was on a show called Twitwit Radio, which was canceled. And when it was canceled, the station went so far. <laughs> Thank you. We'll start our first question with Mr. Mark Van Landewit. Ready? All set. Okay. Raise out. According to Pacifica bylaws, one of the duties of the local station board is to work with station management to ensure that the station policies and procedures for making programming decisions and for program evaluations are working in a fair, collaborative, and respectful manner to provide quality programming. Do you think that KPFA policies and procedures for making programming decisions and for program evaluations are fair in a fair, collaborative, and respectful manner? I'm not sure. I've taken a look at the bylaws and of everything. It's a, it's a very lumbering governance structure, as far as I can see. And, uh, and we need to be a little more flexible, a little bit more nimble. Less, less stiff jointed than we have been in the past. I'm very interested in program development, about the programs that we're going to be creating in the future. I want KPFA to take advantage to, 
to be a platform for the incredible new energy that's in our political sphere. Uh, the youth of America are on fire for change. Uh, in 2016, we had 14 million people vote for Bernie Sanders. Right now, we have two self-described democratic socialists in the House of Representatives. We have things like the Sunrise Movement uh, that are demanding change on issues of climate crisis and inequality and health care. It's vitally important that we be the platform for these voices, for this energy. Uh, and in that respect, uh, I hope that in terms of program development, that we are able to showcase younger voices, new voices, and uh, voices where that have not been heard before. Thank you. You still have time. Oh, I, uh, I'm okay. That's, uh, okay, you ready to go? Sure. Thank you. All right. Our first 30-second answer will be addressed by, uh, by Ms. Kimura. Do you have a 30-second comment or question? Uh, no, only to say that um, I'm a fairly new board member, and from what I've seen uh, from the LSB board uh, meetings that I've gone to, it seems that uh, the board has made every effort to reach um, as much input as possible for diverse programming. And I think it's reflected, if you look at the program schedule, that we have very diverse programs running from um, you know, uh, music all the way to uh, the topical issues of our times. So to that extent, um, you know, having a community advisory board, Thank having uh, other, uh, we, it Thank seems you. to me do, we're doing the maximum input to all facets of programming. Thank you. Mr. Cook, 30 seconds. Um, <clears throat> I, th I think that we could be more welcoming of diversity, more inclusive and respectful in our culture. I think we're moving in the right direction, but I think we could do more. Listening to the listeners is a key thing, and addressing the uh, vocabulary and addressing the tastes of the people who are just, they're not sponsors yet, but they could be. And I think it's gonna take some, some study Thank you. to find that. Ms. Plonzi, 30 seconds. Several shows were canceled, which I considered essential, such as Pushing Limits, which was for people with disabilities, and Discreet Music, which was a, a truly unique and wonderful show. Voices of the Middle East and North Africa. Um, my own show, as I was saying before, um, Twitwit Radio was canceled with no explanation or warning, and we even were locked out of the station when when we tried to come, come back and see what was going on. They changed the key codes. So I feel like community uh, radio is not community radio without a program council. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Arguelles? Yes. Um, I think that there are several things that are exacerbating the situation. I think we need a permanent program director who regularly attends LSB meetings. I think that the amount of time allotted to members for expressing their concerns is abysmal. I think it has to be expanded. And I think that we need a town hall meeting and program council. Since we don't have those, tensions are building up and suspicions are circulating. And another thing that I think could help is a procedural agreement sheet or statement required. I've, Thank I've you. Pro pro presented four or five times and never signed anything. Thank you. In regards to content. The next question will be addressed towards Mrs. Kimura. Ms. Kimura. Should the role of the local station board be amplifying fundraising? If not, why not? If so, what is your fundraising strategy or approach? Two minutes, please. I think it's obvious that um, when you are a listener-supported station and when you are also dealing with topics that we're dealing with that are not going to be dealt with, as um, Mark says, by CNN and other stations, that fundraising is absolutely essential that we reach people that are going to not only donate and support us financially, but they're going to donate and support us financially because we are um, showing and we're going to have programs that, are, that meet their needs, that meet their curiosities, and to meet their um, um, cultural, certain cultural viewpoints. So to that extent, fundraising is absolutely essential. I do agree that um, we can use the you know various forms of fundraising, bumper stickers, uh, you know, 
uh, bulletin boards, uh, you know, and maybe, um, you know, do things like have a sponsorship, have a KPFA day at the um, A's or Giants game, but, you know, look at all sorts of diverse uh, fundraising to make us more visible, because visibility is really what the key is to fundraising. Thank you. Mr. Cook, you have 30 seconds. I agree that audience expansion and audience engagement is a key to fundraising. I think working together with vibrant community organizations, uh, both to publicize what we're doing and to gather input for what is going to serve the community is a really important piece of the puzzle. Terrific. Ms. Plonzi? Well, um, when I hear people say fundraising, that's a big umbrella term which covers a lot of things. Um, listener supported radio, I believe, should be listener supported or um, you run into conflict of interest. So my concern would be where are these funding sources coming from and <laughs> will we have a say in who they are? Um, and I'm done. Ms. Arguez, 30 seconds. Yes, I think people are getting pretty tired of all these uh, fun drives that we're having on the air. I think it's boring, and those of us who can contribute have already contributed. But a uh, few people know that Pacifica's mission statement requires it to establish awards and scholarships for creative writing and to promote and air other creative activities that serve the cultural welfare of the community. This is very rarely, if ever, mentioned on the air. I think that public forums, debates, and film festivals would fulfill this obligation and raise additional funds for the station. Thank you. Mr. Van Landewit. I think the community outreach events that KPFA has been doing has been very successful, but we need to maximize our presence on the internet, on social media, and this is where campaigns make their money and generate revenue for themselves. This is where KPFA needs to start playing. We've been 15 steps behind where we need to be, and uh, we need to be able to expand uh, how we sense our presence in, uh, in uh, culture. Thank you. The next question is uh, directed towards Mr. Cook. In your opinion, how healthy or unhealthy is KPFA financially? How would you describe the financial problems in a nutshell? And how do you propose to start resolving these problems? Well, that's a sticky wicket. Uh, I, I think that KPFA's financial challenges need to be seen in the context of the financial challenges of the Pacifica Network. And I believe that KPFA is the solvent and is holding up a number of other stations in the network that are not solvent. And I think that the answer to that is to give uh, assistance to those other stations so that the people who are doing programming there can become successful in building audience and raising funds so they can pay their share of the, uh, the national costs. Um, it, it means learning from our experience and where audience has been static or shrinking, that's an experience we need to learn from and perhaps change, perhaps with assistance from people who have succeeded in building audience. So I, I want it to be a supportive thing. And I think that seeing it in terms of a culture of responsibility and mutual aid is, is going to help us get out of it without a lot of infighting. That's, that's my goal. I think the divisiveness, uh, and, and sort of fear-based, conflict-based stuff has gotten in the way. And if we move to proportional representation, where the input that people have, representation on the national board, is proportional to the paid membership, then those ways of doing things that have been financially successful will have a way to spread, whereas Right now, they're kind of capped by a, um, a, a representation structure that rewards failure. Thank frankly. you. Thank you. Ms. Plonzi, you have 30 seconds. I feel like I need to hear the question again. <laughs> sure. Um, because, yeah, it's gotten a little muddied in my head. Okay. 
The, the question was something along the lines of how important is fundraising oh, and are we doing a good no, job? No, no. Or, no. Let okay. me read it again. In your opinion, how healthy or unhealthy is KPFA financially? How would you describe the financial problems in a nutshell and how do you propose to start resolving these problems? In 30 seconds, please respond to Mr. Cooks. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm hearing a lot of things that I agree with. Um, right now, I feel like pretty much everything people have proposed here sounds really good. And when you have a station with a lot of people contributing, it really does sometimes come down to infighting and fussing about specifics. I hope I don't get caught up in that. I hope that what I have time for is to really learn everything about how things are working at KPFA, because I don't know that. I have to admit that I don't know that. Um, and I don't have any really great suggestions. Well, thank you. Yeah. Ms. Arguez, 30 seconds. One more time. You're making a response to the answer that Mr. Cook gave for this question. In your opinion, how healthy or unhealthy is KPFA financially? Mm. How would you describe the financial problems in a nutshell? And how do you propose to start resolving these problems? Yes, I, I think from, from what I've been able to gather, KPFA has been a solvent for quite some time. We couldn't prove it because we couldn't get the information from the Pacifica network because they weren't doing audits. And so this made mm -hmm. it difficult for us to go other places and ask for support. Um, I also think that, that I agree about proportional representation. I think that y you're right. It does reward failure when you have uh, people who are not held accountable for what, what's going on at their stations. Thank you. Mr. Van Landewitt, 30 seconds. As to the question, comparatively speaking, KPFA is doing fantastic compared to uh, our, all of our affiliates. Uh, this is an open secret, but it's, it's worth talking about. Um, KPFA is the only station that is able to seem to pay its bills on time all through, uh, all through the different financial cycles. The question is, is can we be a model for our uh, sister affiliates? Uh, what we're doing right, can it be uh, duplicated and can it be multiplied across the Pacifica network? I hope we can do that and not duplicate the bad stuff we may be doing. Okay, Ms. Kimura? Uh, yes, it's my understanding that KPFA is current in paying all their bills and is a b very solvent entity. Unfortunately, uh, we are not an isolated uh, entity. Other stations uh, are having issues and problems regarding finances, so certain of these issues must be dealt with on a national level. Um, I think it's important that not only do we go to these meetings uh, at the national level, but that we also um, make an effort to have personal relationships with these uh, people, other affiliates and other stations, so that they do in fact trust our judgment and will look to us as guides and not overbearing people saying, hey, we're doing great and you should be doing what we're doing. Uh, I think there's a misconception Thank that, you. Uh, regarding that. Oh, fantastic. So we've had three rounds of questions and now before we start our closing statement, I just wanted to let you know that the views expressed during this program are those of the candidates and not of KPFA. Ballots will be sent to all KPFA members on August the 15th and need to be returned on October the 15th. Please visit elections.pacifica.org for more information on the KPFA elections. So now we're ready to begin our closing statements for one minute each and we'll start with Ms. Plancy. All right. My name is Mantra Plancy. I'm a comedian and an actor, a singer and a mom, and I come from the arts. Um, I, I come from the Bay Area arts community, um, which is alive at KPFA, many of whom are unpaid workers, and we need strong advocacy, I believe, at KPFA. Um, and I'm wondering who speaks for the artists at KPFA right now? Um, as a lifetime alumna of Keithka Women's Chorus, we've been welcomed to KPFA for many decades, and it's sad to think that an era might be ending in which there isn't as much programming for the arts. The, one of the original um, imprimaturs for KPFA was that it would support literature and arts for a public which is very diverse, some of whom are 
housebound, can't make it out to the theater. I mean, I, you know, are elderly or young. We need to hear all these voices, and all these people need to have um, something to keep listening to on KPFA. Thank you. Please vote for Rescue Pacifica. Thank you, Ms. Arguez. One minute. Closing statement. This is our closing statement, yeah. Um, I think it's an honor to serve on the board, but it's also a challenge. And part of it is because of the way that the network structure is set up. I don't know if you can zero in on this, but this is a diagram of the way we are organized. I think it says a lot. Um, I also think that um, we need to transition out of our historical adversarial two-party system. I think there's, there's too much of that already in our nation's elections. We need to work on getting members elected because of their experience, their expertise, their wisdom, and their generosity of spirit. I think we have a huge job ahead, and I think there are places and ways for all KPFA supporters to contribute to the station. So let's pledge to making this more transparent, easier to access, and listener friendly. Vote for me and the slate uh, for United for Independent Radio. Thank you. One minute closing statement, Mr. Landewitz, Van Landewitz, pardon me. No problem. What KPFA provides is needed now more than ever. We are at a crucial point in our nation's history. We're at a pivotal moment for our planet's future. Hope I don't sound too melodramatic. Uh, we all need to make sure that KPFA stays strong, vibrant, and relevant. Uh, we all need to fight for KPFA's future. Uh, my name is Mark Van Landewitz. Please vote for the United Coalition candidates. Find out more at unitedforindependentradio.com for more information. Unitedforindependentradio.com. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Kamura, one minute closing. Thank you. Um, first thing I want to say is I'm an immigrant. I wasn't born in this country. I also come from a group, Japanese Americans, who are incarcerated because of their race. I believe that I can offer my unique experience to the LSB board to find out truly what it's like to be an immigrant in this country and be somewhat welcome and also be told to go back where you came from. Uh, I would like you to uh, vote for me on part of the slate of the United for Independent Radio because I will definitely make sure that there's going to be programs that are relevant to underrepresented people and to people of diverse cultural, geographical, and sexual orientation. Thank you. Thank you very much. And lastly, Mr. Cook. Thank you. I am trying to bring a viewpoint of social permaculture, of inclusion, of valuing and cultivating diversity. And in order to do this, we have to clear some of the wages of oppression that we've gone through and that are magnified in the society at large, but also show up in a microcosm in some of the processes in the station. As a consequence, a culture of respect, a culture of mindfulness, and self-care and compassion is what I think is needed. And that's one of the things that I hope to bring. Another thing is using social media and other ways of listening to the listener so that we adjust our vocabulary, our aesthetics to the people who are the next ring of potential listeners. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching or listening to this candidate forum. We hope that you've enjoyed this conversation and please visit our website, kpfa.org. On behalf of myself, Vita Flores, and Ann Laser, our timekeeper from the League of Women Voters, have a good evening.